on today's episode of The Edit Code. Disclaimer, I thought WandaVision was great. The series managed to nail every unique homage to sitcoms of America's past, while simultaneously building upon the arc of two lesser developed characters in the cinematic Goliath known as the MCU. It also kept me second guessing what was actually going on and its unpredictability was definitely a strong point. From an editing standpoint, it was really neat watching an oldies multicam sequence actually cut like an oldies multicam show, only to introduce an out of place shot accentuate the abnormality with some unsettling audio, only to return to its normal state moments later. These little details in editing helped sell the idea that something isn't quite right in Westview. But whereas editing can giveth, it can also taketh. WandaVision had a major problem, and WandaVision's major problem could have actually been solved with literally a single cut and paste in editing. This video will define the major problem, explain why I have felt so DISAPPOINTED, and offer up a suggestion that may just have fixed WandaVision. Alright, I'm not going to beat around the bush here, there are major spoilers ahead, so this is your final warning to jump ship before I potentially ruin your day. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is your last chance before the subscribe button reverts back to a receive weekly telegraph by mail button. So there I was, casually enjoying my binge of WandaVision because suddenly, my schedule magically materialized some free time. After the Malcolm in the Middle, early 2000s themed all new Halloween spooktacular, which introduces the wacky off-brand Pietro, revealing the limitations of Wanda's power over Westview, having this unsettling encounter happen between Vision and Agnes, and capping off the episode with a literal bang, I was left with insane expectations for the next episode and the rest of the season. And I should know better by now. For the most part, episode 7, which is breaking the fourth wall, held my attention, but it sort of felt lackluster after the previous entries. And IMDB seems to agree here. However, it certainly did have its fair share of fun, silly moments that made the first couple episodes really enjoyable, more intense moments that remind us we're watching a superhero show, all while advancing the plot at a steady pace. But in my opinion, the ending of this episode and the first part of the following episode ruined the entire momentum the show had going for it. And alright, I'm just gonna say it. This is possibly the worst villain reveal in the entire MCU. Throughout the series, Agnes appears as Wanda's overly friendly and nosy neighbor that we're all supposed to love. Sure, there are a couple moments where it's implied that there's something weird going on with her, like this scene in particular, and a hint that Agnes doesn't have a house in the neighborhood, which is a bit strange, but hey, the whole show just kind of feels like a giant fever dream, so no biggie. In Breaking the Fourth Wall, Agnes volunteers to babysit Wanda's Instagrow children, and we see her being her normal self in this interview. Nothing weird going on here. But when Wanda has yet another showdown with outsider Monica Rambo, Agnes comes to break things up and finally brings Wanda to what we're supposed to think is her house. Oh, and they try to make this house creepy, but it's only creepy in the sense that some curtains make the rooms dark, and there's this bug, and the audience is force-fed some spooky ambient noises. So when Wanda asks where her children are, Where are the twins? Agnes replies, Oh! They're probably just playing in the basement. And then she walks behind a wall. This just feels like Horror Tropes 101. So, like any protagonist in a horror feature, Wanda tiptoes into what is pretty clearly not your average basement without much reaction at all. Where's her danger sense? Anyways, when this is clearly turned into an episode of The Vampire Diaries, Agnes pops back in to say this. Wanda, Wanda. You didn't think you were the only magical girl in town, did you? Revealing her name and true form. The name's Agatha Harkness. Lovely to finally meet you, dear. And then this happens. Who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. All right, from an editing standpoint, this is actually really cool, and the song is insanely catchy. And it definitely gets some bonus points for being the most unique villain reveal in the MCU. But oh does it fall so short in so many areas, especially the area that matters most, triggering an emotional response from an audience. A surprise villain reveal needs to leave a huge impact, as in they need to do something truly evil to sell the evil all along twist. It should be shocking, and the characters and audience should experience an overwhelming level of betrayal. While making children disappear has a little bit of weight, 
although at this point it's hard to tell if the kids are even real. Agnes luring Wanda into her spooky basement and creeping out of the corners petting a bunny as she reveals she's the villain, purely by virtue of these visual cues, and literally just telling Wanda feels kind of cheap and disappointing. In addition, the reveal of insidious intentions throughout the earlier stages of the story should be clear and vital to the main plot, which you could argue they are, but they should also be truly evil, which I would argue they aren't. All we really see her do is mess around a magic show, which gets Wanda to reveal her powers to her, possess the neighbor, create a Dollar Tree Pietro, mislead Vision, interview Wanda to get more information, and yes, and I killed Sparky too. While it's pretty neat to see how this reveal shows Agatha gathering intel on Wanda and getting in her head, none of these things are particularly shocking or evil, and that's coming from a dog owner. Agatha all along is a fun scene, but it just felt like a real lackluster reveal for the big baddie of this show. Agatha all along is just the beginning of WandaVision's major problem, which I'm gonna call a slump. The following episode opens with a flashback showing a tiny bit of Agatha's backstory, which is literally all it does. I had no emotional response to this at all. Alright, she's a witch, she did something bad, and now all the other witches need to kill her, but she's too powerful to be killed, and she kind of absorbs their power, and we get, in my opinion, the weakest scene in the entire series. And this whole section is just kind of a forced exposition dump that lasts way too long, and the audience ends up feeling kind of like Wanda here, just restrained and forced to listen. Of course the rest of the episode is actually incredible, and serves as an example of how we should actually do an exposition dump in cinema by showing rather than telling, and Agatha does way too much telling in my opinion. She's kind of like that cliche anime villain that spends five episodes talking about her backstory in the middle of a fight, only to die after two minutes of an actual battle, but... I'm getting ahead of myself here. Point is, we don't get to the best part of this episode until 12 whole minutes in. And all right, here is my huge editing suggestion that you've all been waiting for. And I think that it would redeem Agatha's reveal to Wanda, the Agatha all along bit, and help this next episode just get to the point quicker. All right, here it is. Instead of opening the episode previously on with Agatha's flashback, we should open the prior episode breaking the fourth wall with this flashback. And on first glance, this seems kind of dumb, but hear me out. The audience already knows by the beginning of breaking the fourth wall that there's something off about Agnes. With the information we have through this point, we can't confirm who she really is. But now, we start the episode with the flashback, and you've successfully surprised your audience and simultaneously opened the episode with a massive reveal, a real bang. Remember when I said that in its current place, the flashback served no other purpose but to reveal backstory and give us plot details that may be relevant in the near future or in upcoming Marvel films? Well, now on top of that, you get a proper emotional response from an audience by revealing that Agnes is some kind of powerful witch, and you also open up the door to even more suspense later in the episode. You see, the audience now has information that nobody else in the show does, and that information would become a driving force for suspense for the remainder of the episode. Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense, famously said, there is no terror in the bang, only the anticipation of it. And I think that would absolutely apply here. When Agnes comes to relieve Wanda of her children, Wanda is fine with it. But just imagine you, the audience members, screaming at your TV. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? On top of that, this scene becomes far more concerning. And the lines she says carry so much more weight and take on a completely new meaning. Oh, you don't have to worry about your mom. Your mom can do anything! She's super mom! <laughs> it's fun for the audience to pick up on this. And then when Agnes breaks up the fight between Rambo and Wanda, we know this might be the point where shit goes down. That whole creepy house thing and luring Wanda into the basement now becomes suspenseful to watch because we now know Wanda is close to finding out who Agnes really is. And on top of that, it doesn't feel forced or cheesy anymore. The audience knows she's potentially walking into a very dangerous situation. And when you close the episode with Agatha all along, it doesn't need to be shocking or surprising anymore. It can just be what it's supposed to be. Fun. From showing the flashback earlier in this episode, you create far more suspense and you relieve yourself of relying on a forced villain reveal because you've succeeded in doing that in a far more shocking way to open the episode to begin with. And as a bonus, 
we can get to the juicy parts of previously on about four minutes sooner, and that's four less minutes of continuous exposition that we have to sit through. Editing is awesome, and I hope that I made you think about how changing the location of a scene in the narrative can have huge impacts on how the rest of the show or movie plays out. Scenes give information, and when you give your audience that information is extremely important. I would love to hear your thoughts on my suggestion, if it makes sense, if I missed anything important, or if you flat out disagree, just let me know in the comments. Once again, thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.